from your perspective though, I mean, Holly, perhaps you could pick this one up first. From your perspective as, a, as an athlete and a practitioner, what was sort of missing in the industry before? you know, for you, what was the, how did it feel when you're trying to look for people when you're trying to, to go out there for support, whether it's different aspects of the, of your livelihood, but also helping you get better? Um, I think it's, I think it's, ver- I think it varies really. It's, so from my experience as, as a golfer kind of coming through the industry and to give you a bit of background, a little bit more background into me, I kind of came from sort of, I come from a single parent family um so I'd always had that one and that one opinion in my life um where um golf golf was very central to a lot of discussions um and you know playing that from sort of the age of 13 upwards you go through a lot of different things from there um and the one thing that wasn't very accessible to me or the one thing that I felt was quite lacking um was was that lifestyle support and it, originally that's kind of why I decided to go into that that performance lifestyle role or at least do the qualification as well um because if you if you've ever played golf it's one of the most probably most frustrating games in the world but and with any elite sport it's normally the top echelons that will kind of be able to travel with that support network or that that team or have access to those kind of people um and unfortunately, that's not that's not a lot of case for a lot of athletes out there, especially on the lower tour, which I'm currently on, because um, there's the Lazy European Tour and then there's the Lazy European Access Tour. Um, and for me, it was a case of, you know, why has this lifestyle support not been accessible from a younger age or why is it not currently there to be accessed by athletes who might need it who are dual career who might uh, all of a sudden get a very life-changing injury and not entirely know where they what they want to do with their lives coming out of coming out of a golf career um as nicole rightly said my other half is is a professional golfer as well and and he's kind of going through that process himself um and there's been the experience where I've also dealt and spoken to another uh, to a lot of other different athletes who have also been on my tour who you know may have been traveling for competition um have maybe had an injury and they've kind of thought well where where can I go uh where someone can can help me who I know um sounds sounds really bad but you know can can speak my language can help me can can help get me ready for my competition which is probably in a few days time um and a lot of girls that I know have really really struggled with it being able to access that support um so and then from a, from a particular practitioner's perspective and as a sports massage therapist it was a case of okay where can I find CPD that I know is reputable where could I be able to access an industry expert that might be able to give me advice or maybe a forum that might be able to give me advice on um, a client that I might be dealing with. A lot of the time as a level three, you'll refer to a practitioner, a different practitioner, a more qualified practitioner. I normally uh, refer to a physio or I'll ask the physio for extra guidance, but um, you know, where can I, where can I go to, to learn more or to access that support and advice that I might need? Um, And it is a big thing, as you mentioned, Steve, you know, coming out of university and going into the sports industry, I think a lot of people kind of expect you to hit the ground running and it's, it's never the case. It's never the case. It's actually very daunting to be think, to think, right, well, I'm going to go into a sports role and now I have to kind of, it's it's like passing your driving test and then going out driving for the first time on your own. That's, that's the way I describe it. Definitely. (laughs) Mm. Uh, That's, that's fascinating in itself, but at a paid level, um, being able to do your sport as an athlete, player, whatever it might be, but having the need or seeing a frustration that you can't access that that type of support or not knowing where to go, I suppose it's probably the essence of the solution that we are trying to provide. That there's a single place that you can go and search uh, as an athlete and Nicole, as a as a practitioner, but also maybe as an academic, if you're working in that academic environment, are are you hearing different perspectives from the graduate pool about entrepreneurship, 
they want to work for themselves. Um, I'm just curious as to what you're hearing from within those walls about, is it all about, I want to, I want a job at Man United or is it actually, I, I want to earn for myself. I think being in the area that we're in, in and in England, there's a lot of people that do want to work with those top football clubs, football especially, just because of the culture in this country. Um, but there's certainly a shift now in the way that students are approaching it, especially as they're graduating. A lot of them are aware of the cost of living. There's a lot more mature students coming to university these days than there was, say, maybe 10 years ago. And a lot of them are, even if they're working with a club or a team, or a particular sport, um, they still want that extra income or they want to develop their own brand and do something unique that's for them. And I'm seeing a lot more of this focus right from year one through to year three on the undergraduate degrees. And even master's students are coming to us and asking us about what they can do to promote their brand. They've got all this knowledge. Uh, they've got the internships under their belt from when they were studying, but they're not able to still get their foot through the door. So, and my way of approaching things when I was doing my degree, um, as a mature student, I live out in Blackpool, which is a bit out of the way of everything else, sport wise. Um, I didn't have access to um, a car because I was medically not able to drive until fairly recently, I can start picking that up again. Um, so for me, I had to make an opportunity. So I focused on developing my brand and merging from the other areas I did into strength and conditioning. And then I ended up setting up a, a weightlifting club when I was in my final year of university and then ended up developing through that stage. And that eventually got my foot in the door. And I went to the individual athletes at different academies rather than to the club. And it's helped me to build my brand, get more sustainable income. I just felt like this could be a place where they could advertise that. They could start to build up, get a couple of athletes under their belts, get further specific experience or build their reputation by word of mouth to the other people in their team. And eventually that opens more doors. So that's the way I kind of saw it from that perspective of helping those new graduates coming out.